Yes, the answer is yes. However, this depends on a number of different factors which we'll get into shortly. Africa today is one of the most extreme places on earth, from Syrian droughts that last for months to floods that can devastate acres of land in some areas. The animals themselves are also what makes this place one of the most dangerous areas to live in, considering that the continent is home to pack hunting big cats, wild dogs, hyenas, venomous snakes, and not to mention the herbivores themselves are in some cases worse than the predators. In this segment I'm going to be specifically looking at the Serengeti region since this habitat would be able to replicate the environment terrorbirds used to live in more accurately. Well, sort of. This is mainly due to the fact that there were many different species of terrorbirds that lived in different time periods and in varied environments. The oldest genus of these axe-beaked murder turkeys were the Phosphoracidae, which first emerged around 62 million years ago, a bit after the last of the non-avian dinosaurs died out so they took the honor of continuing their legacy. They also varied in size from the 8 kg Paleospilateras, I butchered the name so it's going to be on screen. This is some of the largest species that can exceed more than 500 pounds. Now some of the more popular in this genus are the Titanus and the Kellenkin. Each grew to more than 6 feet tall but in terms of weight the Kellenkin was superior. Kellenkin was also the older of the two that lived in South America, more specifically Argentina where it was the undisputed apex predator of the region. Weighing more than 240 kilograms, it easily outcompeted the other top predators of the area, including the Pathicus smilus. The other species, the Titanus, also lived in South America, but later on when Kellenkin kicked the bucket. However, competition was now more stiff. Yes, it was still a top predator at around 170 to 200 kilograms, but it also had to compete with other top predators such as caiman, canids, felines such as the jaguar and the smiled on Gracilis. However, this would further intensify when Titanus became the first terror bird to actively cross the land bridge and move from South America to North America, where it then encountered new threats and new competitors, like more canids, the infamous short-faced bear, and possibly the smiled on Fatalis. The reason I say probably is due to the fact that this species evolved just a couple of hundred thousand years before Titanus became extinct. It is confirmed that they were in direct competition to the Smaldon Gracilis, however, which lived alongside it in South America at the time. Some studies say that the populations of Titanus that migrated to the North American plains adapted to the new environment and was around to see the rise of the largest Smaldon subspecies, however, that's still up for debate. I personally think that the populations of Titanus that adapted to North America also lived with the Fatalis, but hey, that's just my opinion. Regardless, this lollipop head looking bird still had a lot of competition in North America, which is hypothesized to be one of the reasons they became extinct due to being outcompeted by the high density of mammalian carnivores that were slightly smaller and some even larger than it. There are some claims that the populations already started to decline even before they started the migration north. Now that the history lesson is finally done, what would happen if Titanus was brought back somehow from the dead? How you may ask? I really don't know. Let's say God decides to give him another chance and plops him into the Serengeti. Now the reason I did choose the Serengeti is that it best imitates the prehistoric plains of North America in both prey and predator density, and also the climate to some extent. In terms of prey selection, Titanus would have had a field day. The unfortunate animals to this big bird wannabe would be things such as wildebeest, Thompson gazelle, impala, warthog, subadult cave buffalo, etc. etc. The main theory on how it sent its victims to the land of the dead was by using its large head to try and trip her over while running and then while dung it would use its axe sized beak with a hook at the end to then butcher it to death using blunt force. It was also thought to be a scavenger when the opportunity presented itself. I mean if you can't compete with everyone else for life prey, why not just eat the already dead I suppose. It also was pretty fast for its size able to reach top speed of more than 40 miles per hour in short bursts, and some studies suggest it could have been a good marathon runner, basically using the same method of wild dogs, which is basically to run prey down until it tires enough to catch up. However, this is limited because it didn't have any pack mates to support it. Or did it? No, no it didn't. It was quite unlikely Titanus roamed in packs, but it was very possible it could have traveled in pairs on occasion. The most dangerous prey it would have considered would be Cape Buffalo. So I highly doubt an individual or even a pair of 400 pound birds could bring down a 1500 pound bovid on its own, which is why it will most likely try to target subadults or newly born calves, similar to other predators such as hyenas and lions. So speaking of lions, how would they react to a beefed up ostrich with a taste for flesh? 
Lions are one of Africa's apex predators with adult males specifically being able to take on any other carnivore on the continent head on, with the exception of a Nile crocodile of course. One on one Titanus and the average adult male lion are kinda equal in terms of weight, with a Titanus reaching up to 420 pounds or more and the average male lion weighing around 480 pounds. I personally would give the fight to the adult male lion due to the arsenal of weaponry and intelligence. However, that isn't to say it would be easy since a kick or peg to the right place could cripple or even kill a lion, but in general the two would probably try to avoid each other. Things start to change when the Titanus would encounter a pride of lions however, since they would quickly turn Big Bird into a Thanksgiving turkey, so it would probably straight up leg it if a pride of lions were around. And in some articles saying that Smilodon could have been a pack hunter if this was true, then this terror bird would know better than to take on a group of large fields. Again this isn't to say that they were pushovers in any way, it's just a survival tactic to reduce injury as much as possible. You know who else lived with Titanus? Multiple species of pack hunting canids and hyenids. So wild dogs and hyenas wouldn't be anything really new, with the only difference being the slight size reduction to their prehistoric relatives. So right off the bat an individual or hyena or wild dog doesn't stand a chance against a Titanus, since it's more than double the weight of the average hyena and more than three times heavier than the latter. However, both of these mammalian gang divisions deploy mob mentality to drive off large carnivores from the kill, with the hyena being the main culprit of this. So if Big Bird was feeding off a carcass, a group of hyenas would most likely be able to drive it off. The same rule would apply to wild dogs, however due to their smaller size, they would require greater numbers to pull this off, and they usually don't scavenge as much as the other predators on the plains. The predator that would now have a greater reason to stay in the trees more than often would be the leopards. Before Titanus migrated to North America, he competed with the Smilodon gracilis, which was around the same size of a very large modern day jaguar at around 320 pounds. And more than likely Titanus would evolve victorious in these confrontations, however this is just speculative and as two apexes that hunted similar prey they would try to avoid each other as much as possible. However, leopards are much smaller with the largest leopards barely reaching more than 220 pounds on record. With the addition to a 400 pound crack chicken, it would just be an addition to the list of carnivores that bully leopards like lions and hyenas. But thankfully leopards usually try their best to stash their prey in trees, so it would be out of reach of other predators including the new one. Also, with the perks of being a feline and taking down targets larger than itself, it could possibly take down a terror bird if push came to shove, but that would be very unlikely unless it was really desperate for food or was peer pressured by the baboons in the tree that told it to do so. When it's time to have a drink at a large water source, it would have to be wary of Nile crocodiles, but it probably would already approach the water's edge with caution since it had some experience with caiman in South America. And I think it would have had the common sense to stay away from the dangerous herbivores such as elephants, rhinos, and the <laughs> spraying murder horse. Overall, I would say they would do okay in modern Africa due to the similar climates and species living there. However, I don't necessarily think it would thrive considering how competitive Africa's ecosystem already is, so it would just add strain to that. With that being said, I do think it would be able to manage medium to small populations throughout the Serengeti without issue. So that's just about a wrap for this video. Some of the points in here may be controversial, but so is the idea of bringing back a Ted Bundy avian back to life. So let me hear your opinions, and what video should I do next? Right. Right with my rice